Hello and welcome to Millennial Matters, where millennials talk about important matters. And today we're talking about quite a controversial matter, and that is President Trump. And here to help me talk about it is you guys, millennials. And we're trying to find out where millennials sit these days with President Trump. So we're a year in. Yesterday was you know a year since President Trump has been elected. Um, so my first question to you guys is, how many of you approve of the job he is doing as president? Raise your hand. OK, two. How many are, th are in the middle? Then either disapprove or approve. OK, one. And then how many disapprove? OK, so we've got two and then one. All right. So um, according to the Rasmussen polls, 43% uh, of Americans approve of the job he's doing as president. Um, and then according to Real Clear Politics, which they took all of these different polls, uh, they found that 39.3% approve, that's the average, and that 564 disapprove. So with you guys, we have two people that approve, we have one that's in the middle, and then we have two who disapprove. So. For the people that disapprove, what are some of the things that you guys disapprove of that he's doing as president? Um, one thing is his constant, uh, what's the word, um, need to intrude kind of in other matters that aren't really his responsibility as president. Um, uh, what's an he, example? Uh, Intruding kind of on the judicial system, uh, he'll tweet all the time about this person needs to go to jail or this person needs the death penalty, and um, it's it really undermines uh, whatever confidence we might have in the judicial system to actually give people a fair trial. And you can't just say so and so deserves the death penalty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have to there's laws, and they might have done something horrible, but there's still laws protecting their right to a trial, etc. Um, he doesn't have a really strong regard for the Constitution. Um, he takes out everybody that opposes him instead of trying to work with them. Uh, he just finds a way to get rid of them and put somebody else in that doesn't necessarily oppose him. And he will turn on somebody like that if they oppose one thing of his, but mm -hmm. they agree with him on the rest. So when you say, um the Constitution, he kind of has a disregard for it. What are some examples some that, that you have seen uh, that he has done that it, he kind of just doesn't really care about the Constitution? The, the Muslim ban's been pretty controversial as to whether or not it is actually constitutional. But um, kind of going back to just that disregard for other branches of government, um, so he's overreaching. Just, yeah, overreaching. Okay. And uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, did you have something that you wanted to say? Sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, I admit that I'm not as educated as I should be on on the majority of political things, and I think that's um, pretty standardized through like millennials mm -hmm. in our kind of culture. Um, but I just I just don't like the way that that he handles himself, the way that he presents himself, um, specifically with Twitter and things that. He does in the press just to like, I mean, he's a he is a performer, and he's continuing to perform uh, in the role of president, and he's um, doing things that just are drastic and obnoxious, and you know, it's it's funny, but it's also like, you know, irresponsible. He's the president. Exactly. Yes. Okay. All right. So for my approved people, all right, what are some of the things that you guys approve of? that he's been doing as president in his first year? I'll go first. Okay. You're good with that? <clears throat> um, so I know that, and, and I appreciate the comments that you gave, and I, I can relate to those too, and I think that there are some things that I'm like, yeah, you could probably tone that down. But what I like about President Trump is I love the America first. And a lot of people kind of cringe at that, which is surprising to me, because you'd think being in this country, you'd be like, yes, I, I agree with that stance. But I love how he's just like, he just says it how it is sometimes, which is brash, I know, and some people cringe at that too, where President Obama, for instance, when he spoke, it was almost like you listened to him and it was like, wow, he really is making good points, but it's because he was really good at speaking. Um, Donald Trump, he doesn't really have those qualities, but you have to remember that Donald Trump wasn't a politician until he ran for president, 
And he really gave up a lot to be president, in my opinion. And that, to me, just showed that maybe he really does care about America, because I would never, if I was in his position, give up my financial situation, my business, or anything like that to become the president of the United States, which has got to be probably the worst job in the world. So. It's got to be tough. Yeah. And uh, what about you, Amy? Um, I kind of agreed with what everyone, what everyone said, just how he presents himself is kind of down. Mm -hmm. But what I like about him is that he is a businessman because we are trillions or maybe more um, dollars in debt in America. And he has improved that. I feel like with Obama, he was kind of against being in war and all that stuff, but yet he spent a lot of money and pro actually the most money than any president in war. Mm -hmm. um, whereas with Trump, like what has been shared before, he kind of stands where he's at and he's also trying to build America financially. I think that's the one thing that he focuses on that I enjoy or that I approve. Cool. And Emily, you, why is it that you're kind of in the middle? You um, either like him or dislike him? Or? Just like they were talking about before, I don't really like the way he presents himself in the sense of Twitter. Like he goes out and instead of talking about like important things, he's having like a, a Twitter war with Chrissy Teigen or something and then like blocks her because he doesn't like something she says or like <laughs> she's voicing her own opinion. And I feel like that's in a way childish and not important and he shouldn't be spending his time on that. Um, but I and there's a few more other things that like I've heard of, but what I do like is what you brought up. He's a businessman, and a lot of people brought up too, but have you seen how many businesses have failed? But it's also, have you seen how many of his businesses have um, worked and how many of them are great? And he understands the financial aspects, and um, we're in a lot of debt. And so I feel like he understands how we can fix that or go about it and how to turn things around. And I also agree with Austin in the sense of um, put America first, like make America great again. Like that's his one thing. And a lot of people I feel like are embarrassed to say they're from America now and that, you know, I'm proud, a lot of people are more now saying, you know, I'm proud to be like this ethnicity or I'm from this country, even if like they were born in America, just because, um, a lot of people are just embarrassed of like what we've kind of turned into, but I feel like it's important to acknowledge like we are a great country. We, we've had all these like, we have all these rights and Trump isn't afraid to sit there and say like, yeah, um, where am I going with this? <laughs> He's not afraid to sit there and uh, stomp on what people have said because honestly, like he's very wealthy and he doesn't have to listen to his sponsors or whoever's paying him to run him or you know during his campaign he could say whatever he wanted because it was all his money unlike maybe hillary during the campaign she had a bunch of sponsors behind her so she had to say what would please those people so the money would keep coming if that makes sense yeah cool all right so trump's approval ratings with millennials is really bad um he is at 64 percent disapproval and 21% approval. And you guys have kind of shared some of your reasons why, and I bet a lot of millennials feel the same as you guys about you know, the tweeting and um, you know, the Constitution and you know, a bunch of those different things. Um, so then my next question for you guys is, how do you guys feel he's doing on foreign affairs? Um, everybody who approves, raise your hand. Okay. Everybody who's in the middle, they neither approve nor disapprove, raise your hand. Okay, and all those who disapprove of his job. Right, you're the lone man, all right. <laughs> Represent. Yeah, so disapprove, how come? Um, he likes to insult people, um, <clears throat> particularly with North Korea. I don't like North Korea, mm -hmm. um, don't get me wrong, but I think <laughs> Insulting them in a schoolyard manner is really not going to help the situation at all. Um, and it really only gives them more ammunition to use against us. All right. So, so. everybody that's, that's kind of in the middle, how come you're in the middle? You, you, you don't disapprove of how he's doing, you don't approve of how he's doing. Who <laughs> picked me? Okay. <laughs> all right, Austin, go for it. Okay. So the reason that I'm more in the middle, I would have told you probably a couple weeks ago, I was more on the, yes, I think he's doing a good job. But I agree with the whole North Korea thing. I think that there's a different way that that can be handled, and I don't think he's doing it to the best of his ability because it's more of like, let's call him Rocket Man. Let's. And while it's funny and we laugh at it, it's a serious matter. That's one thing that bothers me about it. But the reason that I'm in the middle and I'm 
for his leadership in this area is because I feel like under other presidents before, and more so Barack Obama, it was more like America was constantly apologizing for what they were doing or the way that they were acting. And President Trump doesn't do that. He just gets up and he says, no, this is America. This is how we want things handled and this is how it's going to be. And he's speaking to America, but he's speaking to the world when he does that, so. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get one more of you guys. Okay, so who else here? Why is it that you're kind of in the middle on this? I don't really understand our foreign affairs. And, like, I understand it, but I agree with what you're saying with the, Obama did a lot of apologizing for America, and it's, if we're gonna set ourselves up as a strong nation, we can't do apologizing all the time. Oh, we're sorry we accidentally hurt your feelings. We're sorry we accidentally did that. Like, we gotta stand our ground, so. I mean, I like that he's doing that, but then I don't really know a lot about it, so I don't really have a stance whether I know if he's doing a good job or not. Okay. All right, so let's move on to the economy. All right, so the economy, um, people actually, it's right in the middle. Like, it's literally tied for Americans, at least. Well, I guess, okay, so it's not exactly tied. Once you get rid of the really small stuff. So 45.3% of Americans, Americans approve of how Donald Trump is doing with the economy. And 45.4% disapprove. So it's like one you know, percentage point that disapprove of how he's doing. Um, so who here disapproves of how he's doing with the economy? Who here is in the middle? Okay, and who, who so you guys approve, I'm assuming. Okay, um, so I'll start with the approve people now. So why is it that you guys approve of his job with the economy? I remember when um, he first got elected or first few days he was in office or something, all of a sudden something, I don't remember what it was, do you guys remember something, was it stocks, was it something, everything just went driving up because everyone, do you guys Oh, the stock it? market, yeah. the stock yeah. market. Yeah, everything, You're saying it right. Everything it right. went <laughs> driving up and I figure, I mean, there's a reason behind that. I mean, I think people realized and had a lot of faith in him knowing that he was gonna do well and nothing bad has happened so far and um, that I know of and Austin, take it from here. <laughs> well, no, I just want to say that the economy is booming and has been booming since he was elected. And a good economy means that the country is doing, I mean, obviously we're not perfect. We're in tremendous debt, like has been mentioned, mm -hmm. but that shows that the country is doing well. And so to me, that shows that he is having some success there. And I don't think it's right when people say that President Trump is not the reason behind that. He may not be the whole reason behind that, but he's definitely part of the reason behind that because it wasn't doing this well under President Obama. Mm -hmm. And like we talked about before, as a businessman, or like I mentioned, he's a businessman. He understands money. He understands how things work like that. And, and he wants to get people jobs here in America versus, like, he may have a bunch of, like, don't bring immigrants over or whatever. Or, and even though some people don't take the jobs that immigrants do take, his thought process might be that let's give more jobs to Americans because more Americans need jobs because everyone's out here saying it's hard to find a job now. So, mm -hmm. I don't know, yeah. Yeah, um, so for you guys, so no one disapproved of his job at the economy, but you guys are in the middle. Why is that? I just simply don't know enough about um, economy in general to uh, really say one way or the other. Uh, taxes and stuff goes right over my head, so. A lot of people, um, yeah. So, and the stock way. market, <laughs> same thing. Uh, I really have no idea what that's all about, so. Um, just kind of. So you're kind of in the middle there. Okay. Yeah. What about you? Um, I'm, I said middle ground because I don't necessarily disapprove, but I kind of feel more disapproving, just because I feel like we haven't seen the results that he promised or mm -hmm. that um, he talked about in campaigning and, and throughout the debates. Um, I don't necessarily like the idea of trickle down economics and starting with the big companies and big businesses and working downward, which I know was something that he was accused a lot of in campaigning um, and then also like I'm from um, Detroit Michigan and so like the motor companies kind of like held America up for a long time mm -hmm. and I know that he had a lot of ideas about how to bring like automotive engineering and, and manufacturing back to the United States bring those jobs back and I haven't really seen that happen yet and so I still am hopeful but I don't think that he's he's doing what um, he needs to be doing to get there 
Um, and, you know, he's got a lot on his plate, but yeah, I just don't necessarily, I'm not gung ho yet. Okay. Yeah, I gotcha. No, so, I mean, but he, according to um, the economy and how it's doing so far, he has done a good job with it, seeing that he's only been in for a year. Um, some of the statistics that I found says that uh, the GDP at, is at 4% annual growth for the first time in years. Um, unemployment is under 5%, which hasn't happened in an extremely long time. And then um, just within the first few months of being president, he cut $3.7 billion in regulations. So regulations that were withholding $3.7 billion from going into the economy. And, econo and economists have said that it even could reach $86 billion with the regulations that he's cut. So I mean, I is, how do you guys feel about that? Is that a good thing? Is that something you guys like to hear? Or where do you guys sit with that? What, are, what do you mean about the regulation? I don't know. So regulations, so regulations on businesses um, and you know, where the uh, companies that are taking their and stuff like, out what of. What is that money? What is, what is it going towards? So that means that, that $3.7 billion in regulations were cut, meaning that those regulations were holding back $3.7 billion of going into the economy. Oh, or okay. from jobs being able to create those kinds of things. And it could lead to $86 billion. So yeah, you had something to say. So I think this kind of ties back into the, like mm -hmm. the motor company thing. Like a lot of those regulation cuts and, and tax cuts and breaks have been for um, the, the elite, the most wealthy, the, the businesses like General Motors and Ford and um, Apple and like the, the, the top 50 contenders type thing. And I feel like they don't necessarily need those um, breaks. I feel like it's more small business that needs the help in America. And so I wish that it would be more focused towards those people than the, than the, um, the top people. Um, but in that case, if it is going to be focused towards, you know, the General Motors and Fords of America, then I feel like there should have been in this last year more that has happened with that. Like those breaks have happened, but we haven't seen those jobs come back it, to, the, to the extent that I think I was hoping for. Yeah. So seeing that you're from Detroit, which was yeah, it's, an extremely it's, successful city and now isn't as successful as it was in exactly. the past. You, okay. Um, so we're going to move past the economy now and we're moving to terrorism. Um, so 46% of Americans approve of the job he's doing with terrorism um, and then 53% disapprove. So where do you guys sit? How do you guys feel about the job he's doing in handling terrorism and terrorists? Um, all those who disapprove, okay? All those who are in the middle and all those who approve. Okay, so approval people, all right. What do you approve of? I think it just kind of goes back to, and maybe this is being said too much, but he just doesn't deal with it. Like when it happens, and obviously there have been things that have happened just recently with terrorism, or at least ISIS has claimed it, so we call it that. But President Trump, he just says, like, this is not and should not be happening in America. And obviously he's one person who can't do it all himself, but he doesn't approve of it, and he does not like it in the United States, and he wants it to just be done. And I think that's what I like about him is he just says it. He's like, this should not be happening in the United States of America because this is America, where other presidents in the past, they've maybe stated that it's terrorism, but he just tells it and calls it what it is. It's like, this is ISIS, or this is, and I guess that's what I approve about him. Okay, yeah, Emily, you have anything you want to add to that? Um, just the fact that a lot of people beforehand, um, just like he was saying, um, what am I going to say? Um, with terrorism, like he was saying, he just straight out says it. And some people may be saying, no, he's not doing a good job about it. But if you look back to like Obama or other people, like what did they do about it? I didn't see them do anything like great about it. So if anything, I like the fact, like Austin said, he's calling it out and like, he's calling a spade a spade. Like when he sees something, he's just gonna say it. And I know a lot of people may um, call some of the violent acts that have been going around terrorism or maybe it's not terrorism and have been blaming it on other things. But like, he doesn't just try and like, I know for some of the things, is he calling some of like the gun acts terrorism? Well, ISIS has claimed some of them, I believe. Like but, the one that yeah. just happened in Texas recently, is he calling that a terrorist attack or is he calling that just like a... 
That got blamed on mental health, that. I thought. Yeah, I yeah that, that was one, mental health. Yeah, has been, but, has been blamed oh. for that one. But, but I mean, but then he does say that. He does say that it's, it's a mental health problem. Yeah. Um, See, and so he, I think, and a lot of people too, I think if you look back on like Obama, if that happened, I think Obama would have really claimed that more as a terrorist type situation. That's just, that could also just be my opinion, just because it involves guns and he was very anti-guns. Mm -hmm. But, I don't know. I feel like, I mean, generally mass shootings are an act of terrorism, right? Like, even if they don't claim ISIS, like, that's still a terrorist act. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, that's just frustrating. Yeah, okay, so, so disapproval. We just got <laughs> a voice. A taste. So let's hear some. Okay, <laughs> so, so why is it you guys disapprove of his, the job he's doing in handling terrorism and terrorists? Um, well, for one, he's condoned murdering their families as well, and that's pretty much a war crime. So um, you, know, you can't just say, do anything you want to, to just get rid of the terror. There are ways to go about it. And so I, but I mean, but he hasn't as far as what's that. going on in the Middle East, mm -hmm. um, I don't really know much about that. But here at home, there's a lot of fear mongering that's going on. And yeah, he'll say terrorism, but what exactly are we calling terrorism? Are we generalizing or are we being very specific about it? And so I feel like there's a lot of generalization that goes on and then there's a lot of fear mongering. And so people just get scared of Muslims in general and that's not helpful. Okay, yeah. Totally agree. To I think that? the generalization comment is spot on. Um, I mean, I, I, I remember when, when Trump got elected, one of the first things he did was the, the immigration ban and he banned like Saudi Arabia and Syria and like all of these countries. No, so he didn't ban Saudi Arabia, I remember that, yeah. which was weird. <laughs> um, but I just, I think he's a lot of talk, um, and there hasn't been as much action as, as he says that he, he will do. And then as well, like, I mean, we're struggling in America to understand the difference between Muslims and terrorists. Um, that's been happening for a long time. And I think that, you know, generalizing and saying, we're, we're not gonna accept anyone from Syria is an issue that you can't generalize and say that everyone in Syria is a, is a threat um, because the majority are not. And, and the majority of Muslims do not support or condone terrorism or, or terrorist acts at all. So I think just being kind of hard hearted in that sense. And I don't, I don't know the solution. I don't know how we stop terrorism without stopping everyone, but I just don't think that it's, it's effective. Okay. And kind of going back to the terrorism thing, just one last comment. Yeah. I, uh, in Charlottesville, the riots in Charlottesville, Virginia, a white nationalist plowed his vehicle into a group of protesters and killed a woman. And people like to textbook definition, textbook define terrorism. They didn't want to call the Las Vegas shooter a terrorist. They didn't want to call this guy a terrorist from Texas because they weren't like politically motivated. But the man in Charlottesville was politically motivated, mm -hmm. obviously. And that and, one was called an act of terror. Right, but it, if he did call it an act of terror, it took forever <laughs> for him to actually admit that it was an act of terror. Um, and so, kind of going back to the generalization thing, like we need to call a spade a spade, but mm -hmm. we need to make sure that what we're calling is, that we need to be specific about it. And we need to apply those terms to everything that it does apply to. Okay, Amy, you're our, our middle of the road woman. How come you're sitting there? Um, kind of the same thing what uh, has been said, like I love how he's just kind of clean cut like terrorism should be done, but he wasn't very specific with what he said, like uh, what was mentioned before. And there has been things where he just gets people kind of routed up and he's really great with um, getting people all excited and he says, yeah, we should stop ISIS, we should bomb them and all this stuff. So it kind of seems like he's trying to stop terrorism with terrorism. And so I'm kind of wondering, yeah, he's supportive of stopping it, but how he goes about it is not very effective or very um, convincing. Okay. Yeah. So you guys mentioned the travel ban and some really interesting statistics I found from that. So 55% of Americans actually approve of the travel ban and 38% disapprove. Why do you guys think that so many people disapprove of his job in handling terrorism, but yet they approve of this travel ban. What do you guys think, Emily? Honestly, I think that a lot of people disapprove of it because first off, you're generalizing and doesn't mean that like someone is actually 
a terrorist just because of their religion or where <coughs> they're from. But also at the same time, I think a lot of people approve of it because they're honestly scared and they think it might work. And so, um, like for me, honestly, it's a thought maybe this might work and it might prevent it. And whether it does or not, it's um, one more roadblock for them to try and get into our country versus, um, I don't know, it's just, it makes it easier and it makes us feel more protected, which is why I feel like a lot of people approve of it. But at the same time, like I said before, you can't assume that everyone from that place is evil just because, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of that race or religion, maybe the most of the people doing like the terrorist attacks and all that doesn't mean all of them are. Yeah. So really fast though. So then, so how many of you guys approve of the travel ban? And how many of you guys disapprove? And how many are in the middle? You're in the middle? Okay. <laughs> I'm vote for both of those. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, I mean, but that's interesting. But, and something that a lot of people will have said, um, a lot of the people, because, I mean, a large majority, I mean, 55%, that's over a half of American people agree with this travel ban. And a lot of people that I found said that um, when you hear it as a travel ban, they didn't necessarily like it. But once they listened to the details, then they were more interested in it. So it was a 90-day ban on individuals from the certain countries that were on the list, and then it was a 120-day ban on refugees. That way, they could implement a system. So do you guys agree with that sense of it, or do you guys um, disagree with even just that, just putting in a, making sure that we have a solid system of, of vetting? What do you guys think? Who, 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 who approves of, of that? Is it like just the 90 days, the 120 days to implement a system? Okay, how many are in the middle? And then, so you disapprove still. Yeah. Okay, so then how come you disapprove of, of that plan? I feel like there's already a lot that we know about people, especially people that come into this country. There's like the intelligence uh, communities that find out a lot about people, like stuff that we don't think they would know, they probably already know. And, uh, I mean, we seem to already have a system, but we don't seem to be utilizing it. And so if we're not utilizing what we already have, what point is there in putting something in new? It's just putting a new coat of paint over the peeling one, and it's not doing anything to fix what's underneath, and it's just going to keep peeling again. Okay, so then most of you guys approved of, of that idea of the travel ban. Um, and why is it that you approve of that? travel ban, the 90 days, the 120 days of putting in a better system. So I, um, I kind of sound like a Trump supporter, which is, <laughs> but I believe <laughs> in strong borders. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, actually. Um, and it's interesting, the numbers that you've given us, because it <laughs> shows me that Americans actually believe that, too. They may not be saying that, and they may not want other people to know that about them, but it's obvious that people want strong borders, or they want America to be safe or stay safe. I know that we can't necessarily say that everyone coming from those countries are bad or are terrorists, just like has been said, but there is some measure, some fear in people that make people go, yeah, I think strong borders is kind of a good idea. That's how I'm seeing it, so. Amy, yeah. Um, I'm just thinking there's just a legal system that has to be done anyways. That's great that a lot of people want to come to America because America really is a great place, but there's also a legal system. If you don't aren't a citizen, then you can't really get a job. There's a lot of, hindrance that you can do if you're not a citizen. So I believe that Trump is trying to do is that's fine if you come, but make sure you go through the system and make sure you do it properly. Because if you're here without like a real identity and all that stuff, you really can't do anything about it. And if you're trying to like fake it through, you're taking away an opportunity that someone else could have being an actual citizen and having all these um, legal opportunities. Yeah, Emily. I think it was also important to know because I raised my hand earlier saying I was in between when you just say travel ban or knowing about that, but I didn't know that it was 90 days for certain, like for certain areas and 120 for um, refugees. I think that's awesome because it's not saying you can't come to our country. It's just saying not during this time period right now because we're trying to figure stuff out and make it work before you come over here so we can make our country safer. Just like any country wants it to be safer, whether some countries aren't or anything, countries have ways of making it safe or you know 
Do you guys get what I'm saying, sort of? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I think every country should be that way, just mm -hmm. like Trump said. Everyone, every country should stand for their own beliefs and make their country the best that it can be. Mm -hmm. Cool. So you guys actually kind of helped me segue into the next topic, which is the border wall, and that is a very controversial topic for many people here in the United States. Um, so. I mean, a lot of people said that the reason why they voted for him was because of a border wall. A lot of people say that Americans voted for Donald Trump because he promised a border wall. But uh, from the research that I've done, I found that 37% of Americans approve of a wall and 56% disapprove of having a border wall. So you guys, who here disapproves of having a border wall? Okay. Who's in the middle? Okay, and who wants a wall? All right, wall girl. <laughs> How come you want a wall? Because living in California, Southern California especially, <laughs> this sounds awful, but there's a, there's a ton of illegals, and it's really frustrating because I, I get stuck with paying all these taxes, and I get stuck with taking out Social Security or doing all that, and I see all these people who are illegal and came illegally and they don't have to pay out of their, like they don't get anything taken out. When they get paid, when they work, it's usually under the table and they get all the money they worked for or did. And it's a little frustrating. And sometimes um, it's frustrating hearing, I grew up going to school with a bunch of them and some of them would tell me their stories of how they came over the border. And while that's kind of touching to see you want a better life, um, none of them are even working towards getting their documents because they've said to me, yeah, it's nice not having to like deal with taxes or it's nice not having to like get, do certain things and be in the system and be um, part of certain things that as citizens we're required to do. Um, I just think that it's unfair of um, people coming over illegally and do it the right way. And I feel like having a border, yeah, it may not stop everyone, but it may make it harder for them to come over. And I'm fine with people coming over from different countries, just do it the right way. Do it the right way and be like everyone else in the country and pay what you need to pay, do your duties what you need to do, but yeah, do it legally. So being from Southern California, um, we know that there are already thousands of miles of border wall. Is there a border wall down where you're at in that southern part of California? And if there is, why is it not being successful? Um, I'm not positive if there's a border wall, as in um, a wall, like I'm thinking that completely. There's not a physical wall no. there. No. And it's the, a theoretical Yeah, wall. and the only um, thing I can yeah. think of is when you walk between, um, I think between where, San, where the border is and where Tijuana is, and it's literally just like kind of a road like rotary gate or something where you walk through. But other than that, um, yeah, there, I don't think there is a physical wall. And I think it just makes it a lot easier for people to come through. And when people drive through, they hide in cars somehow. And yeah, our officers may like do their jobs to search and everything, but people do really good jobs at hiding. And whether they still do that, I still want a wall because people, I know someone else told me their father like, swam in a river across to get over to California. And it's like, if there was maybe a wall there, that might have been a harder obstacle than just to swim across a river. So, just, yeah. Okay, cool. People that were in the middle, how come you're in the middle? How, you neither approve or disapprove of having a border wall. Why is that? Um, so I, I kind of agree with what we were talking about earlier with the idea of strong borders. I think like there's, I don't have a problem with Syria. I don't have a problem with people from Syria. I don't have a problem with Mexico or people from Mexico. And I think that we should encourage people from those countries to come and, and thrive here. Just wish it would be, be legally, mm -hmm. um, first and foremost. And then to the wall, like the wall isn't gonna stop anyone from getting into the United States. Like there, like you already said, there are already thousands of miles of you know, gates and walls that are already set up. So I feel like the purpose of the wall isn't actually to stop people from getting in here. It's just to send a message. And it's to say, hey, look, we just want you to come here legally um, as opposed to just sneaking in and, and benefiting 
off of the system for free. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, the reason I'm kind of half and half on that is because although I, I like all of that, I also know that I, the message that it sends beyond that is like, we don't want you. And so um, that's a hard thing to say, like to, to generalize again and say that we don't want any Mexicans or we don't want any Syrians. Like that's, that's not the message that we want the wall to send. I think we just wanted to say, come, but do it the right way. Yeah, any, you guys want to add to me that? No, I, it's kind of interesting, I guess, that I'm such a middle person when it comes to the wall because I really do support Trump and a lot of the other things he does. But the wall, I guess, kind of going along with what you said, it, it, it's more of a statement, I guess, when I think of the wall. Um, but then listening to Emily's side, because I'm not from Southern California, it makes me go, oh, maybe there is some need for a wall that maybe could deter some of that. I don't really know. But that's just my thoughts with the wall. I think it's just, I think we could be using our time more wisely than trying to build a giant concrete structure. I don't know, I could be wrong, but that's just my opinion. Okay. Yeah, I was kind of thinking the same thing. I feel like having everyone go through a legal system is really important, but I also feel like money and time could be better used than a massive cemented wall. Um, it is really important for people to like understand when they come in, there is a system, they have to go through it. And it's not fair if they're reaping the benefits of what citizens are doing for them. And um, just, just simply, like as, as great as a wall would be, I feel like it's not really necessary. All right, so Brian, mm -hmm. you disapprove of the wall. Why is that? It's a complete waste of time and money. Um, planes exist. Um, if people want to get in here legally, then they can just come to visit and then just stay. Um, there are legal systems to become a citizen, um, but they're incredibly overburdened. Um, and we need, to, we need to expand those systems if we want to be true to saying, yeah, like, come and do, do it legally. Um, unless you really have an established, like, contact here or, like, a family member who lives here, um, good luck trying to become a citizen, mm -hmm. uh, at least in a reasonable amount of time. Um, you can't just pack up your family and expect to move to America and somehow become citizens in the next seven years. Um, so we definitely need to revitalize the, and expand those legal systems. If we do want to send that message of come here and come legally, we need to show people that we're making an effort to accommodate that. All right, and our last question is the direction of the country. How many here approve of the direction the country is going? Okay, how many neither disapprove nor approve of the direction of the country? And, okay, and then how many, um, let's see, so it was approve and how many disapprove of, I guess you're the last person. You're the <laughs> I last guess person I disapprove, that, that yeah. disapproves <laughs> the direction of the country. So I'll ask you, so why is it that you disapprove of the direction the country's going? Um, I feel like just the way, like the moral of the country, like morale more, more to say than moral, like just the way that we feel about America right now isn't where it should be. I feel like a lot of people feel like the sky is falling and that's not okay. Like we shouldn't be scared in our own country. Um, but at the same time, I think a lot of that is based on false information. I don't think the sky is falling. I don't think it's the end of the world. I don't think that we're gonna destroy America in, within Trump's presidency. But um, I think just the way that we, we feel about our president, the way we feel about our leaders, the way we feel about each other, there's a lot of hostility in America right now. Mm -hmm. And I just think like there could be a lot more that we could be doing to, to relieve each other's burdens and pick each other up, which sounds corny, but um, I think that's something that we're missing in America right now. Yeah. And Amy, you were the lone approval person. Why is it that you approve of the direction the country's going? I feel like even though it's only been one year, it's only been one year. Like there hasn't been so much progression, but it's still in the beginning stages. And so I feel like there's a lot of potential that America can meet. Um, there has been some improvements just here and there, but it's just the beginning. I think it's going to escalate. Um, 
like what's kind of mentioned before, like even though leadership and morale and like humanity, honestly, like all of the like humanity in general is just going down as a world society. We're just not very um, individualistic. Our relationships aren't as like strong core and like worth eth ethics are kind of up in the air. But I feel like having Trump as a um, just like a business minded, very black and white person, I feel like that's what America needs right now because everything is so hesitant, like, oh, just be who you want to be, which is like fine, but there's a lot of gray areas and I feel like Trump helps to make the line of black and white and where America needs to go forward with. And then we had the biggest group of people in the middle. Why are you guys in the middle? Um, I guess I should have voted for both approve and disapprove because I'm not really like just kind of in the middle. Uh, well, I guess I am in the middle, but not like because I <laughs> but just you don't. But you lean more I, to I'm, one of those I'm sides. both ways. Uh, I disapprove because I think there's a lot, like I mentioned earlier, fear mongering. There's a lot of fear mongering that is dividing the country and um, a lot of propaganda uh, that is dividing the country, like generalizations and stuff like that. And that's really dangerous uh, for the sense of community that we want to have in, in the United States and the sense of uh, outreach and outgoingness. That's not a word. Um, <laughs> especially in the, the last kind of six months or so, uh, I, there's definitely been a lot to be proud of um, in this country. All the allegations of sexual abuse that are coming out mm -hmm. from uh, like Hollywood and today a politician, there was a politician, I think Roy Moore is his name, um, there's all these allegations and stuff like that that are coming out and people are speaking out about that and people are finding the confidence to come forward and say this happened to me and this person did that and they're in a position of power and people applaud them all the time and that shouldn't be happening. And people are starting to take it seriously. Right, people are starting to take it seriously and I, that's part of why I don't understand. Part of what I'd also disapprove of is that Trump bragged about grabbing women by their genitals over a year ago and people kind of brushed it off and because he called it locker room talk and the, that's a whole other conversation <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we still kind of just brushed it off like it was a lightning bug and it's not uh, we can't have people that approve of that kind of behavior abusers protect abusers and uh, we're seeing a lot of that being uprooted right now by the confidence, all it took was really one person speaking out and we've seen a whole wave and we think, wow, this is shocking. It's really not shocking. We just mm -hmm. have been pretty blind to it. And so I approve of that. I approve of the direction we're going in terms of that, being able to call out these horrible things that are happening and being able to uh, call it for what it is and uproot those horrible systems that have been in place, so. Yeah, thank you, you guys. So for me, I guess the reason I'm more middle ground is I believe that America can always be better. And especially right now, I feel like there is a huge divide. I think that we could all agree with that. There's just a divide in the country. And I, people want to blame it on Trump, and I guess you can, but I think that's really shallow-minded to do because I think the divide started years before Trump even thought about running. And I think that if the country was just better to each other, if we just tried a little bit harder to be a little bit kinder, things would be a little bit better. But that's not happening, and I think what we're seeing more of is, and I know that Trump is not innocent of this because he's obviously part of with the divide. He's a completely different way with that. But citizens are doing the same thing. The riots, the whining, the he's our president, it's, it's gotta stop or nothing's ever gonna get better. We have another three years of Donald Trump for sure, unless something comes up that he gets impeached <laughs> for, I mean, who knows. <laughs> but we have another three years with Donald Trump and he could easily be reelected again. Mm -hmm. And I really think that people just need to realize that this is democracy and this is how it works. And I know that people don't like him. They should have came out and voted. They should have elected someone different. That's all I have to say to that. But it's time to stop complaining about it and just go forward and help make the country better. Trump might be terrible to some people, but you don't have to like him. You don't have to agree with him, but just help the country go forward. Don't hold us back. And Emily? I don't really have anything to say on this one. <laughs> That's why she was neutral. <laughs> right. Okay. So how many of you guys, so this is the final and we're wrapping it up. So how many of you guys want to see president be successful as the president? All right. Cool. I, I would raise my hand on that too. Like, <laughs> as the president, I hope he's successful. I hope that he does a good job as president. I hope that, like everybody was saying, that 
we bridge the many divides that we have in our country right now and that we can get a good economy going, that we can be kind to each other, we can take certain things seriously such as sexual assault and different things like that, we can take that seriously. We can all just come together as, as a country. So, and I want to thank you guys for being here. I really appreciate it. You've been a lot of help and it's been a lot of fun. So, and thank you for joining us here on Millennial Matters and we'll see you next time.